Alright, welcome back everybody. This is GTM. This is the third part of our uh, still life video tutorials, or should I, I should say third model. We're going to go ahead and knock out the, the barrel. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and launch up uh, 3D Max. And earlier we have already um, grayscaled our images. So if you want to check out uh, that video on how to properly grayscale your images in, images in Photoshop, uh, feel free to check it out. Um, all right, well, I'm going to hit Alt-B or, you know, Control. I'm sorry. Uh, you can hit uh, Views, Viewport Backgrounds right here to get to this uh, little dialog box. Or depending on which viewport you select, obviously the front one, we're going to hit Alt-B. It's going to open this up. I'm going to go ahead and look for files. And I'm looking for um, our barrel image here. All right, here we go. I'm going to open it up and make sure we match the bitmap and lock zoom pan. Alright, um, I'm going to hit G for my grid again. Alright, uh, one thing that we got to study, notice we are in the front viewport. One thing is, notice how the barrel curves on the top and at the bottom. So I'm just going to throw a s cylinder right in here in perspective so we can kind of see what's going on here. And I'm not adjusting anything right now. I mean, you know, the, you know, what kind of, you know, basically how many faces I'm going to be working with the edges. Uh, what I do want you to though is in the front viewport how it's straight across on top, you know, and straight across at the bottom with our geometry. You got to remember we're pretending that we're seeing this barrel straight across because this is a perspective image of it. You know, as if we were actually standing. It's what whoever the photographer was. You know that's the angle that, that he was standing in the camera that's how it rounds off so what I do not want you to do is when you start shaping this barrel out here I'm just converting it to a poly I do not want you um, shaping it out like that trying to match match it in perspective by rounding it off because now you're gonna screw up you know the look of the barrel because it's not supposed to have like a round top or anything so just keep that in mind. This is supposed to stay straight across. And, you know, you don't want this happening. You don't want to try to match it out. You know, match the curve. That's what you do not want to do. Otherwise, you know, you're going to have uh, a hard time trying to model this. All right. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and delete that. So remember, that's what I don't want you to do. All right. Let's go ahead and knock this out really quick now. So I'm going to go ahead and um, just like our two earlier models, we're using a cylinder. And let's go ahead and uh, change the segments here. So I'm going to go 3 in height. That should be plenty. And 8 sides. Let's go ahead and scale this. And then we scale it. Remember, we're watching all four viewports here. I'm going to scale in the uniform where it's yellow right here. Scale it out. And let's just go ahead and um, bring this down slightly. And I can probably just kind of on the Y axis scale it down. We're just kind of roughly getting it in there. All right. Um, from there. Let's go ahead and prep this up. So I'm going to click on him, right click, convert to edible poly. Um, let's go ahead and I personally like to hit my M key and just throw a gray shader on here and change my, let's change him yellow just for now. I usually go black lines, but all right. So I'm going to go ahead and go to my um, polygons here and let's just, I personally like to delete those nothing it's not too necessary but like I said that's just the way I work all right um let's take our vertexes here we're gonna go ahead and scale this in remember our R key is our scale and we're going from the uniform here so I'm in the front viewport I'm scaling it in uniform you notice I'm paying attention over here so I'm gonna go ahead and just um, shape that out whoops And let's go ahead and scale that in right about there. Now we could probably shape this out a little bit more. I can grab any one of those edges. Right there. I'm grabbing an edge here. I'm ringing it. Might want to get used to this uh, tool. And then connect. Hit the dialog box. That's all you want is one extra edge. I'm going to hit OK by hitting that check mark. And you know the edge is still selected already. So I can just kind of scale that out to shape it out. And let's go ahead and um, 
highlight those, connect it, and I'm gonna hit my check mark to hit OK, and then scale it out. And as you can see, this would technically be our low poly barrel if we were to make a low poly one. So I could easily just uh, grab those borders here, and cap it off, and that would be our low poly barrel. Of course, you know, I would use my, um, even take it a step further for the low poly version, we would actually highlight these faces. And let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. If I were to render this out, I'm Alt W and I'm going to render this out. You know, um, looks pretty decent for a low poly, but we can actually probably smooth this out a little bit more by grabbing these faces. I'm highlighting all these faces right here. And if you go to your, uh, smoothing groups and it's in polygon mode you have these smoothing groups here if I turn that off notice every face is at a 45 degree angle this is how you usually help low poly models take their shape all you gotta do is turn on a smoothing group and then now you can see it kind of rounds off and of course if, if I want to straighten that one out I can um, you know uncheck that so that's 45 but watch this one I'm gonna grab this one and select a smoothing group that one kind of rounds off so that's kind of rounded off, and then this one is uh, set out of 45. So hopefully that makes somewhat sense, and I'll render that again. And that's by just grabbing a, a face and unchecking it, and it handles the smoothing group of it, or fixes the smoothing group. So in this case, let's just go ahead and I'm going to highlight all of them and just press 1 and make it all kind of smooth. Alright, but that would be... A low poly version of it. So I'm going to actually delete these faces though because we're going to work in high poly. Alright, so uh, from here, let's go ahead and um, we're going to create the illusion of those top, you know, those, uh, I guess the, the metal rings around a barrel. Alright, uh, now remember, do not shape. Do not shape the vertexes. Oops, let me grab a vertex. Don't grab these and um, try to shape it along the contour of the rings. We don't want that. That's not what you want to do. All we're going to do is um, grab an edge here, ring it, connect, and then I'm going to slide this one to represent that ring. And, you know, we're going to make them a little bit thinner. I guess I can loop this and then, you know, we can kind of like move that up a little bit and I can reshape it by scaling in to round it off a bit something like that but for this version of the barrel I'm gonna keep them kinda of thicker which by the way I guess we could grab this edge here ring it connect I'm gonna slide this one up somewhat in the center and scale that out slightly there we go to round it off more notice that everything is you know even here let me hit my G key so you can see it. All right, but the, this edge right here is going to represent, if I ring that or highlight through, that's going to represent, let me go polygons, that is going to represent those faces. All right, so uh, I'm going to actually do this again. I'm going to hit ring, connect, and we're going to slide this about right there. That looks pretty good. I'm going to hit OK. And then I'm going to do it one more time to get the top. So I'm going to ring, connect, and we'll slide this up slightly. And that's going to represent the top. You'll see in a second here. So we're going to get two more rings down here to represent these two rings. So, Or these two metal pieces. I'm going to grab an edge. I'm going to ring, connect, and we'll slide that. That's probably going to represent one ring. And then we'll get one to represent this. So I'm going to go ring, connect, and I'm going to slide that one about right there. So now this ring, this edge is representing the bottom of that ring. I guess somewhat that edge is representing the bottom of that ring. All right, let's go ahead and um, knock these all at once. So I'm going to go ahead and cap this right off the bat. So we're going to take the borders here, one, another one here. I'm going to cap these off. All right, I'm going to go ahead and um, 
take that edge and we're grabbing that edge and that edge. I'm holding control as I grab those three edges. And I'm gonna grab this edge and this edge. That represents, you know, the rings that we're gonna loop here, or ring around, I should say. All right, so I'm gonna hit ring, it grabs them all. I'm gonna hold down my control key and hit this guy. That's polygon, so it's gonna revert, invert them into the poly, polygons. All right, got that, but then I'm gonna hold control and grab the top here. So I got all those polys selected. Now, with my, you know, in polygon mode, with extrude, the dialog box here, I'm gonna click that. And notice this uh, extrudes out my polys, so if I raise them out, you can see they're kinda extruding them out. But what I wanna do is, here, I'll move this off to the side so you can see. I'm gonna click this right here, and we're gonna go to local. If you're on an older version of Max, just uh, look for the local. I think it's a radio button you'll be using. I'm gonna hit local. That way, you notice it 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 rotates or it you know extrudes off on its local access point. So I'll probably just uh, raise that out a little bit. You know, we don't have to go too high with it. You know, maybe we can go lower, like that. But I kind of want to give this somewhat of a a little more stylized look. That looks pretty good. And then I'm just gonna hit OK. All right, now we got our faces that are extruded. We can actually um, start working on the details here. So if I were to throw a turbo smooth here, notice we have no control of our edges. Almost looks like a keg now of some sort. All right, let's go ahead and uh, take care of these edges here. So I'm actually going to grab this face, hold down control, and that face, and I'm going to hit inset. And if you notice, I'm zooming in. When I scroll and inset, it goes in a little bit. So I want to kind of bring it in about like that. Notice it takes care of the top and bottom. All right, next thing we're going to do is we're going to start uh, chamfering our edges here. All right, let's go ahead and, uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and chamfer all these edges now. So to control this, so let's see, I'm going to grab this edge here. Kind of zooming in now, by the way, with my middle mouse. If you're seeing this jump in and out like that, it's because it's doing an increment. So I'm gonna actually scale it with my magnifying tool here. All right, um, we'll hold down Control. We're gonna grab that edge, and you know I'm gonna grab this edge as well, right there. Um, I'm gonna grab all these inside ones. Control. I'm holding Control as I grab these. I'm grabbing each one of them. I guess I could ring this all the way down, but there's certain ones I don't want to grab. So I just want to grab what's representing the rings of the barrel. And we're going to do kind of a quick fix here of shaping these out. So let me grab uh, that. And we're grabbing that edge. So we're doing these all at once. Just like that. And I'm going to grab that edge right there. And remember, the reason we were able to loop these, these top edges, because we have an edge you know, on top of it and one below it. Parallel to it, I should say, I suppose. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and loop these, just like that, and then we're going to hit chamfer, the dialog box right here. That's going to split our edge. I'm going to zoom up on this so you can see what's going on. All right, with my chamfer tool, so notice we're splitting the edge. So if I... Um, bring this out you can see that we're chamfering and splitting here's what it is when it's at zero which you never want your edge to be at zero um, so if we go one somewhere around there like that that's a nice little split like that which you don't want you don't want this you don't want to overlap if you start seeing black edges being flipped or faces then you know you've overlapped your edges or your polygons so we're gonna keep this right around there just a nice little split of the two edges or the edges in the two hit OK just by that alone we throw our turbo smooth back on you know we pretty much controlled our um, oops our uh, geometry there so now um, I'm gonna add just a little bit more detail here I'm gonna grab just that face and I'm gonna in extrude it in a little bit just like that. 
And I'm gonna actually with that face still being selected, scale it in slightly. And from there, let's go ahead and um, I can actually take that edge and loop it. Probably that edge. I don't think I can loop that one because I have to do another insert. So we're gonna actually take this face and set it in, or in yeah, I always say insert, but and set it in one last time, just like that. And then I'm going to take this edge, oops, that edge right here, loop it, and let's go ahead and um, grab this edge. I loop it, and then I'm going to chamfer that. And it remembers the old setting, so I can just hit OK. All right, there we go. So we kind of got like a barrel, somewhat, you know. Now, uh, of course, we can shape this out a little bit more, so I'm going to grab polys. Let's go to our vertex mode with turbo smooth turned on, right? We're in vertex mode. Showing results, so we get the orange bounding cage, and now we're working in smooth form. So I'm just highlighting these, and we're going to kind of scale this out a little bit to match, you know, somewhat our um, shape of our barrel here. I guess we could grab all these and just scale them out. You know what we should do is I'm going to go ahead and just grab them all at once. So it makes it easier on us. And I'm just going to like scale that out so that matches. And I can bring this down a little bit. Scale it on the Y. Not like that. Alright, so there we go. Here I'm going to change my lines to black. Just uh, I don't know why that green's looking crazy to me. Alright, so there we go. We're going to go ahead and um, end up modeling our apple last and then we're gonna merge these in and just render out a nice little simple still life scene alright there you go so let me go ahead and render that out there's our barrel let me do that one last time there we go alright and let's uh... we'll continue on to the next video alright catch you uh... in a few seconds here i suppose